in looking at a reaction such as A plus B turns into C, in order for this reaction to actually produce C, there's some things that have to happen. The first obvious thing that has to happen is there has to be a collision. And A has to collide with the B, otherwise it's never going to make any product C. But not every collision is going to result in a product because the collision has to have enough energy. That goes back to what we talked about before, the activation energy. There's that barrier that has to be overcome for the products to be made. Also, an important concept is there has to be the correct orientation. Even if an A hits a B with enough energy, it won't always make a C because maybe the molecule A has a reactive site. This part of the molecule is reactive and it has to be that part of the molecule that collides with this part of B in order to make a C. If the unshaded areas collide, it doesn't matter how much energy is transferred in that collision, we're never going to make a product because the reactive part of A has to hit the reactive part of B. Mathematically, these concepts are related to the Arrhenius equation. We have these on the formula sheet. The rate constant K is affected by the temperature T. The rate constant is also affected by the activation energy. A reaction that has a very large activation barrier will have a very small rate constant K. The pre-exponential factor A is related to the orientation factor and also the collision factor. Normally the Arrhenius equation is going to be used in this class in a slightly different form which is also on the formula sheet. If we look at the same reaction at two different temperatures, this pre-exponential factor A will drop out of the equation and we're left with a more useful form of the Arrhenius equation. This equation lets us calculate the rate constants at two different temperatures, T1 and T2, or if we measure the rate constants and we can measure the temperature in the lab, we can calculate the activation energy EA.